This week has brought fresh questions about the futures of some of the country's most storied newspapers. The Baltimore Sun has a new owner, but his political background has sparked concerns about what the 187-year-old newspaper could become. And staffers at the Los Angeles Times walked off the job today to protest planned layoffs. That's after its top editor stepped down following reported tensions with the paper's billionaire owner. Anne-Marie Lipinski is a former editor at the Chicago Tribune. She's now the curator of the Neiman Foundation for Journalism at Harvard. Thanks so much for being with us. My pleasure. So the new Baltimore Sun owner, David D. Smith, I think it's fair to say, raised eyebrows at his initial staff meeting where he reportedly insulted the journalism that's being produced by the paper and told the staffers to focus on profit. Is this type of ownership model a sustainable one for newspapers moving forward where the super wealthy swoop in and, and buy them up? No. Um, you know, billionaire owners uh, do not equal a business strategy. Um, there have been a number of them in the last decade or so, some of whom have had very good intentions, and in some cases um, there has been some success. But this idea that your success in one realm will translate to a success in another, in this case um, newspaper publishing, um, is not axiomatic. And I think from all accounts it was a rough start between Mr. Smith and the newsroom. He talked about not having read the paper hardly at all um, and had a lot of criticisms, um, not just of the paper, but of the community. And I think that's a rocky place to start. And there wasn't a lot of detail um, about what else except let's make money and change um, that the newsroom could really sink their teeth into. I think it's, it, the mission is not clear. And David Smith is also executive chair of Sinclair Broadcasting, which has drawn criticism for injecting conservative and right-wing commentary into its local news broadcasts that owns over 200 uh, local TV stations. What concerns do you have about how that might impact the Sun's journalism moving forward? Uh, I think, you know, we have examples historically where um, newspaper owners had political agendas. I think the question is, where do those play out? Do they play out on the editorial page where we come to expect political endorsements um, and political campaigns, as it were, um, played out by owners and publishers? And I think that's, a, that's something we're accustomed to. Where it gets really dangerous and interferes with the reporting obligations of a newspaper um, is when you see that agenda creep in to the news. Um, and we have certainly seen that. Um, you know, we've seen national campaigns roll out uh, at Sinclair, for instance, where um, all of the markets or many of the markets were required to read these identical statements about fake news, which effectively sounded like um, um, an attack on the press that very much mimicked the one that President Trump was was voicing at the time. So I think that's, you know, there are differences. You can, you can play out a political agenda um, or have an agenda around issues in the community on the editorial page. Columnists do that. Um, where it really becomes a problem and where a community is not served is when that plays out in the news columns. Let's talk about the LA Times, because we mentioned that uh, walkout today. It's the first work stoppage in that paper's 143-year history. What's the impact on the landscape of news in Los Angeles and the surrounding region? The walkout is an interesting strategy. Um, but I, I guess my question is, um, who's paying attention to that? Um, you know, those of us in the media are paying attention to it. I, um, I hope that there is a sustained conversation with the community, though. We have mounting data that show us that when newspapers are diminished or close in communities, um, there's an increase in corruption, for instance, um, violation, like pollution violations, um, EEOC violations. I, I wish that we could pivot and have that conversation when newsrooms are under attack or when we have shrinking resources, because that's the real cost. Yes, there are jobs 
Uh, there are journalists who pay a price and lose their jobs. But that's true in a lot of companies and a lot of industries. The, um, the outsized impact here really is on what happens in communities. And we need the support of communities to support these institutions. You know, Anne-Marie, as much as it pains me to say this, the this, this, this story of print media is in so many ways a story of decline. Sports Illustrated, which was once considered the standard of sports journalism today, announced they're going to lay off most of their staff. You work in this space. Is there anything that is working? What's the story of reinvention for print media? Is it the nonprofit model that Evan Smith is championed with the Texas Tribune? Uh, the Texas Tribune is a good example. It's had some financial challenges, but um, they've done incredible work on a different model. Um, you, we have seen in the past um, handful of months um, this initiative called Press Forward, which is $500 million being committed across, I think, 22 um, donors, foundations, and individuals to support a local news initiative um, in markets across the country. We have a lot of people living in news deserts now in this country, and this is an, this is an effort to try to return local news to a lot of those communities, strengthen it in places where um, there are maybe fledgling efforts. You know, Baltimore is another good example of that. Um, the Baltimore Banner, um, if the Baltimore Sun is disappointing you, you should be supporting this new, this new effort, which is a startup, um, which is being run in part by a lot of um, alumni from the Baltimore Sun. Look, in my perfect world, they both thrive. Um, but if one model isn't working, we have to be experimenting with some others, and a lot of those are not-for-profit models. Anne-Marie Lipinski is the curator of the Neiman Foundation for Journalism at Harvard. A real pleasure to speak with you. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you, Jeff.